in the history of biogeography we will be discussing about the ecological versus the histological uh, biodiversity so ecological as we have discussed earlier that it is related to the ecology and uh, the historical that means we have the fossil record and how different organism had different history different life history and how they distributed themselves onto the different continents and that is discussed in the historical biography and we will be discussing that how both of these are different from each other so the most fundamental split in biogeography is that between the ecological and historical aspects of the subject so the, uh, the one is the ecological aspect in which their the organisms are having their own ecology and the reason why they are occupying one particular environment or one particular geographic area and the historical aspects uh, is that why they are in there in the first place where did they come from what happened that they had to come there and they had to colonize that area so the ecological biography is concerned with the species confinement to its present range in the sp uh, space what enables it to live and where it does uh, where it does and what prevent it from expanding to other areas that is discussed here so why don't, don't the kangaroos live in india as well even though we are taking the kangaroos in india in different zoos maybe but why not naturally what happened that they couldn't come from all the way from australia to the india right so that is discussed in ecological biogeography and then there are the roles of soil climate latitude and topography along with the many other factors which are discussed in the ecology same are the true for the ecological biodiversity as well so in a way the ecological biodiversity uh, biogeography uh, is concerned with short term periods of time so it is not pertaining to the long period of time or to the evolution and they are uh, at a smaller scale with local within habitat intracontinental questions intracontinental that they do not concern themselves with the uh, the what is the difference between the biogeography of different continents we cannot study that at this level and the primarily with the species or subspecies of living animals or plants so as it is ecological biodiversity and we have the most data for uh, the animals and the plants for the living species only the species who are dead they come into the historical pers perspective of the biogeography and that is the next thing so in the historical biogeography it concerned with how did the taxons come to confine to its present range in the space as we have discussed earlier that how a particular taxon or particular group of species came to live in a particular area why did kangaroos live in the australia only so that was uh, that is uh, the historical uh, biogeography and where when did the distribution have uh, to have its present boundaries when did the distribution come to have its present boundaries so when did uh, the australia had the confinement of the kangaroos from the mainland asia or the other continents to which it was attached and how have the geographical events shaped the distribution so geographical events there are certain uh, islands formation there are the continental drift which produce many different for example the india was originally part of africa and it was you know separated from the africa and it continued movement towards the asia and it attached itself with the asia giving rise to himalaya so all of these are the geological events and that geological event gave rise to the new biogeographical distributions so historical uh, historical biogeography is concerned with long term evolutionary period of time with larger often sometimes global area so it may be related to the global events or global distribution of living organisms in the past and often with the taxa above the level of species and with the taxa that may now be extinct so we cannot discuss one species at this level so we have to discuss the taxa for example because the species are not living anymore and it is not as much productive uh, to discuss about the species as much it is productive to talk about the taxa 
at this level because taxa handle a lot of species as compared to the uh, a single species so and then there comes the difference between the plant biogeography and the animal biogeography so plant biogeography is called phyto biogeography uh, or phyto uh, geography and then there are the animal geography which is called zoo geography so they have different patterns of distribution the plants are static they won't migrate from one place to another unless their seeds go there and the plant the animals on the other hand they can migrate because they are not static they are not sessile they will move on their legs and or fly or however they will move and they will migrate to different areas so their migratory patterns are different and their lifestyle is different that makes them uh, different uh, in terms of biogeography as well so their form and growth much more closely conditioned by their environmental or ecological condition we are talking about plants here and it is far easier to collect and preserve plants as compared to the animals so uh, the fossils of the plants they are not as much informational as compared to the um, uh, animals uh, animal fossils animal fossils are much more uh, equally uh, good and they are preserved better and they give a lot of information about the past animals so what we have here the plant biogeography the scientists who study the plant biogeography they are much more concerned with the ecological biogeography while the and uh, the uh, the scientists who dis because the zoologists who are discussing the zoo geography they are much more concerned with the histological biogeographical aspects of the biogeography